Welcome, everyone. As most of us know, each year since around 2006, we've been getting together once a year, usually on a Saturday in November at Ben's Kosher Deli in Manhattan. Uh, we usually have between 50 and 80 people, all of us fans of all these classic music from the 60s, 70s, and 50s, and also fans of New York radio. We love the, the radio and our classic DJs, um, people like Harry Harrison, uh, Cousin Brucey, Dan Ingram, and all the others. Um, at our annual events, we have had a number of celebrities, DJs as well as recording artists, people like Jim Kerr, Bobby J, Pat St. John, Big J Sorensen, Bob Radel, Sue O'Neill, uh, Ken Dashow and Broadway Bill Lee. And we've also had some entertainers too. Uh, Lillian Moss of the Exciters, um, also um, Randy Safudo of Randy and the Rainbows and a few others. So we always have a good presentation and a great meal at uh, Ben's Deli each year. I would be remiss if I didn't thank two people, one of them, uh, Alan Berman, who's unfortunately no longer with us, but also the person I team up with each year to create the event, Bruce Slutsky. Bruce is not here today. He had a, we had a very sad event, a tragedy. His wife, Karen, of over 30 years, passed away earlier this week. Uh, we say a, a, a blessing for her. Baruch Hashem, uh, may she rest in peace and may she be with God through an eternal life. Uh, it's very sad. Um, Bruce and she had so many memories. Karen was always with us to support our oldies event. And it's a tribute to Karen and Bruce, that we are here today, that you know we've been doing this for so many years. Um, but anyhow, um, Bruce insisted that we continue on with the event despite his, his loss. So I'm glad that we're all here and we're all uh, together and sharing our love for the music and the oldies. I did wanna mention that uh, we all love so many DJs from CBS, FM, WABC, uh, WMCA and other places. Um, the thing that was unique about Harry Harrison is that he was sort of everyone's favorite uncle. Bruce Morrow was seen as more of a personality and a little silly at times. Dan Ingram was more of the witty guy, but Harry was just someone that you just loved. You just loved hearing him. He was a calming, soothing voice on the radio. And in fact, I had asked Patty, please, please have Harry come to our event. But by the time that he might have been able to, he was not in physically good condition. And in fact, when he won the award or received the award for uh, Broadcasters Hall of Fame, that weekend was when we had our event and it really would have been too much for him to go to two events in one weekend because his health was failing. But anyhow, we're happy to have um, uh, Patty Harrison here today to talk about her dad and the memories she shares and his music uh, that he played and uh, everything else uh, good about Harry. Patty, and a please, Talk about yourself. You're, I don't know much about you other than who you are, but please talk about your dad, yourself. Uh, you know, we know that he got into music and radio back in the 50s in uh, Peoria, Illinois, and then Chicago, then WMCA, and then, then ABC, and then CBS FM. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about his history and how he wound up on New York radio. So, Patty, please go ahead. Okay. This isn't about me. This is about dad. Um, so I have nothing prepared, as I said, I'm more an off the cuff type person. Um, but as Jeff said, um, he doesn't, there's a little, couple of little things that I would like to share about dad that you may don't, you may want to know about, um, how dad got into radio, um, is, uh, kind of a fluke. He, um, didn't study to be in radio. He was studying, uh, he was in the seminary. He was uh, studying to be a priest. Um, and, um, he developed, um, oh gosh, oh, I, I can't believe I don't remember this. It always comes right off the top of my head, uh, rheumatic fever. So back then, um, he was in bed for almost a year and, um, I don't know the exact dates in the years, guys, my memory, Hey, I'm getting old. I'm a little foggy up here. So bear with me. So, um, radio was his best friend. And uh, he listened to music and uh, like most of us who are in radio, you emulate and you kind of play around and um, he played around and he, uh, he decided, I don't know if I want to go back. And he got an internship and um, just kind of catapulted. And, um, 
and some of the jobs my dad had in uh, things are going to be out of order guys so just bear with me a lot of things my dad did um along the way in his uh growing up and in his childhood he always told us um you know nothing is uh, beneath you nothing is um you know any job um he told us he was a, a a soda fountain jerk. He, he was like the best ice cream soda maker and egg cream and milkshake guy. And all of you know that we always went out for his milkshakes. Um, I couldn't have them because I would just glue them to my rear end. But uh, daddy would love those, especially the chocolate ones. Um, he, um, he took, there were four kids. He took us all out um, once a week on Saturdays, you know, for an egg cream in close to New Jersey. There was this little place we used to go to. Um, he was a, um, oh, he mowed lawns in a cemetery. He always had this joke. And, you know, even as we got older, it was still, oh, come on, dad, that's so corny. He said he loved that job because he was the boss because everybody worked beneath him and under him. There was nobody above him. You know, it was kind of the, the running joke. Um, he, uh, oh, he was, daddy was a huge movie buff. He, um, he loved movies so much that he, um, he was a ticket taker in a movie theater. Remember those days? Like, you know, um, rip and take and sit, rip, take and sit. Now, now it's like the person's behind the glass or you order it in advance and you're drinking, you're, you probably get a steak and, uh, I don't know, shrimp now going to the movies. I haven't been in so long because you sit home and you watch Netflix and Hulu. I don't know. I don't even leave my house anymore <laughs> just to go to work and and watch TV. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't have to go to a movie. But dad loved the movies. Um, huge movie buff. His um, favorite uh, regime of music, I would say, would be Westerns. It would be Westerns and then it would be um, uh, dramas and uh, his favorite TV shows. Oh my God. If I saw one more episode of Law and Order Special, Chris, Chris, uh, Special Victims Unit, um, and also uh, Sh Chicago uh, Fire uh, PD. Um, he liked all of those, um, but Westerns, totally. And, um, you know, Netflix and Hulu, he wouldn't want me, he wouldn't let me get the box. He wouldn't let me order anything. He wanted me to go to Best Buy get the disc so we could put it in so he could watch when he wanted. He, he was not up on the times as much as I tried to educate him. So we did it his way. Um, on his good days, um, my aide and I would put him in the wheelchair and we would take him to Best Buy and I'd say, okay, Puck, let's go up and down and let's pick out what you want. And he would say, I like this one. Let's buy this one. And so at least he had a say in what he would buy. And uh, um, but he was a blockbuster guy. He was so sad with blockbuster clothes. Um, that was probably his favorite, his favorite thing to do. Um, I, 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 up there at the top was just getting in the car when I would take him for rides um, or just us going out together. Um, that was probably my favorite thing too. Um, he and mom, I'll back up, he and mom uh, met uh, one, I don't remember who introduced them, but it is somebody in the radio industry. My mom was a petite model from Cranston, Rhode Island. Um, that's where many of our summers were spent um, at the Rhode Island beaches, not the New Jersey shore. Um, and my mom, as I said, was a petite model and dad, uh, was, I think she came to New York and I don't know the whole story. I had a concussion a few years ago. so. My, my um, part of my memory is gone due to that concussion. So, and I asked my dad and I tried to write everything down and it's still packed away and I apologize. Um, I'm still even going through so many of his things and I have to do it in my time because this is the hardest thing that I've ever, ever had to go through. And today I, I think will be cathartic for me. Um, and also, um, I was hoping for you guys as well, because I know how much you cared and actually still care about Patrick and myself. And um, it's amazing. Even though I don't have my family, I still feel like I do. I have my radio family and even the, um, current, the current staff at, uh, at the station, they're awesome. I still cons I consider them my friends. They're, they're awesome. 
I have bonded so nicely with these guys and some of whom didn't even know my dad still came to the service. And I know some of you who I never met before and I purposely did not make it a closed service. I made sure that you were able to come and say and pay your respects. And some people thought maybe I was a little cuckoo for doing that, but you know what? Daddy called you his radio family for a reason and to pay your respects is to pay your respects to a family member. And you loved him so much and so many of you came out. So that's why I left it. You know, you could have your two hours to say hello and goodbye to dad, Patrick and myself. And I, I wanted you to know that I intentionally did that. And um, I hope you know that. Many of you I have not gotten back to on your, um, your cards and your notes. And please understand why. It is so hard for me to still get up and go to my job every day um, and function. I put on a good face. I really, really do. Um, but I also know that my dad is with mom. He's with BJ and he's with Michael. And um, that's really where he belonged. And, um, you know, the last couple of days, it, it, that's where, you know, I, I knew um, and I was blessed that I was able to take an early retirement. I was in staffing and recruiting. Um, I was doing a lot of sales and marketing for about 25 years for various staffing and recruiting agencies, and you get burnt out. So I was able in 2014 to kind of take an early retirement from that career and um, take care of my dad. And when I say take care of, I mean, I didn't want to put him in a home. I didn't want to um, put him somewhere where other people were gonna take care of him. He wasn't sick at that time, meaning that he, I wanted to spend quality time. He and I loved, and some of you know this because we've seen you out. He and I loved to go to Best Buy. He and I loved to go to Target. We loved to do a lot of um, just hanging around together. We did our grocery shopping together. People recognize his voice in the grocery store. Um, never ever did he turn somebody away if, you know, hey, Harry, um, I recognize that voice or he would take time to say hello and he would take time maybe to take a picture or just ask about your family. He may not have recognized your name or we would get in the car and he would say, honey, do you know who that was? And I said, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. You, you knew who he was and he still treated you the same way, whether he knew your name or he didn't. Um, and he raised us that way. And um, I am just so proud <laughs> to be his kid. Um, I feel like I'm babbling and I'm going to wrap up because I intentionally wanted to spend as much time answering some of your questions and hearing very short stories. And I say short because there's so many on the call that are going to have stories that anybody who wants to ask me a question or that maybe wants to share a little something will have their opportunity. And we did try to limit this to no more than an hour, so I wanna be fair. Also, this is my first time doing anything like this, and it's my first time being invited, um, I mean, participating in the group. As um, the guys said, um, Bill and Jeff, and uh, you know, they did say I'd been invited before, um, but I felt this was about the right time. Um, a little bit about me quickly. I, um, I was the little girl that always, always, always looked up to my dad. Um, I, I wanted to follow in his footsteps as long as I could remember going to WABC with my dad. The boys would probably run around and, you know, talk to the engineers and stuff like that. Um, and I would be like, I would be, I was mesmerized. I loved music. I, um, as I grew older, I became a fitness instructor and aerobic instructor. I was obsessed with the mixing and all of that stuff. And, um, I, I, I knew I wanted to go to Boston College to study communications and broadcasting. A lot of people said, why Well-rounded education. I know you could get that at a, 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 an Emerson College, but I also love the Boston College campus. Um, so I went to Boston College, graduated. But what I did do, and when I speak to students or I um, advise kids, um, I got an internship and I did this because my dad advised me to. I got an internship my sophomore, 
sophomore year, maybe junior year at a radio station in, in Boston. And it happened to be a CBS owned and owned radio station. I applied to so many stations. Well, everybody in Boston wants to be in radio and television. And you know what? I wasn't ashamed to say, hey, and my father works at uh, CBS FM, you know. Um, I got in, got an internship. I did exactly what dad said. You make coffee, you shred paper, you make friends in any department you can. You say hello to the janitor. I don't care what you do. You make friends on um, the AM side and you make friends on the FM side. And um, I did. And um, one day I, I was a senior at, in college. I was running the Casey Kasem or the Shadow Stevens, the discs, the, the records. Um, and uh, my big break was, I was so excited every Sunday morning at the top of the hour, I practiced all week. You know, I'm such, I was such a radio geek. I, um, all I had to do was say the exact call letter, the exact, you know, legal ID. And it was WHTT 1035, I think it was 1033 Boston. And it was gonna be Boston or Boston? It was gonna be 1033 Boston. WHT, so you know, you know, and any radio people know that you're, you're so excited to do this. So I did. Now we had a new program director starting on Monday, but the guy who was to follow me, I'll never forget, Lee Gillette, he had a death in the family and he was to take over and start the one o'clock hour. Um, and <laughs> he was to take over the one o'clock hour. I pulled all his cards. I set up his, his music, the commercials, everything. And um, the hotline rang and it was the new program director. I had no idea who he was. He said he was driving up from Florida, taking over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, do you know enough to go on the air? I said, okay, yes. He said, I, I heard you're pretty good. He said, I, I, I know you know the board and everything. He said, less is more. I said, okay. He said, do it till I get there. I said, fine, I will. I did, he kept me on for the full four hours. Not bad, right? I thought until I left the pot open and I made a mistake and I knew I made the mistake, except I said, shit, while the pot was open and I didn't slide down. Now we've all had those moments, but I said, okay, I'll get over it. Howard Stern gets it all the time. Hey, Patty Harrison, one time, right? I get called into the office and uh, I can't, you know, I am, we are friends with this gentleman. It's Tom, oh God, I can't remember his name. I'm blank right now. He gave me my big break. He offered me a job, long story short. He said, I'm looking for a female jock. I'm making some changes. He said, we have to work on your language. Please don't say shit on the air anymore. He said, you need some work. I love your knowledge of uh, music, uh, your pacing. And um, I, he put a number across the table. He said, do you have an offer yet? I said, no, I'm graduating in May. This is March. He said, good. Will you work here? And I took the job. I, I couldn't wait to tell my dad. Dad was happy, but he also knew what radio was like in the mid eighties. Um, the, there were some changes in the eighties in, in radio than when he went. Um, and uh, oh boy. So um, I, I got my big break being at the right place at the right time and having knowledge, knowing people. And the other interesting thing is, is that dad and I worked under the same program director, Bob Vander Hayden, daddy worked for at one point and I worked for. Bob Vander Hayden worked at CBS FM in um, New York City for a period of time. And he worked up in Boston for a period of time. So dad worked at CBS FM and I worked at CBS FM just in two different markets. And that was pretty cool. And I'm so proud of myself because I got that gig on my own. Um, I, I just uh, uh, over the moon over it. Um, I, um, uh, I, I takes me back. Um, and I am working on getting back on the air. I, I want to so badly. Um, so there's a whole bunch more of, of cute little things. And dad did help me. Um, every time I said, dad, could you listen to this, this little air check? Could you listen to this snippet? But I do want to say something because Broadway's on and I am going to have Broadway listen to something, not today, but at another time. I, when I was at a radio station in Providence, it's kind of Attleboro, but it was Providence and it was called Kicks 106. And Broadway, I 
he was one of the guys, and he knows this, that I just emulated. I tried to be the female Broadway. You didn't mean to be, but when you listen to people and you love them and you, you know their timing and their pace, I loved my dad, but it's a different generation. Broadway had this thing with the rhyming and the ba uh, and the ba uh, ba. Uh. So I had an air check. I had a show and I was doing middays in Providence and I have something and I always considered it. It's my Patty Harrison Broadway Bill Lee thing. So I can't wait. And I have, it. I used it for an air, for a, it's on my demo. It's on my demo from, I don't know, 1990 or something. I don't know. It was Jaya, Jaya at a couple before noon. I, that's all the part I can remember. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, dad was just, uh, I, anyway, I'm gonna close it out. Let's do some questions and answers. Okay guys. I see, oh my God, I see so many questions. All right, is that cool? Okay, just so everybody knows, this is still recording and you okay. can take yourself off mute. I'm gonna put this in gallery view so everybody can see each other as we all speak. And you can ask Patty any question you want. Should we go through the order? Maybe some of them I caught up on already. Uh, you know what, maybe if we just uh, start people uh, Broadway Bill, you still there? Can you hear me? I am, sir. Yeah, you, you, you went away when I said how I liked what you uh, the way you sounded on TICFM in Hartford. Oh, wow. Yeah, Bill Lakey, just... standing tall and slamming against the wall. Patty, you must have, at WHTT, you must have worked with Chief Engineer Buddy Giordano. I did, I did, I did. Buddy and I reconnected um, a couple of years, a few years ago, and I did a couple of filling gigs at TIC when I worked at Pro FM in Providence. Oh, all right. Yeah. Did you use your real name in Hartford? I don't remember you I on did, the air. I did. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You know what, Patty? I did not know that Harry was in the seminary. So was I. Um, it's nice to know we have that in common. That's um, he's always, you know, the thing about Harry is uh, he's always been so genuine, whether it was on the air or off the air. You got the same guy. Only he wasn't announcing a commercial or anything when you had him off the air. But what a gentleman. You know, um, radio is full of a lot of crafty people and a lot of people that are out for themselves. And a lot of guys, especially when you're in radio, all they're worrying about is where they're getting their next job. And is it a higher market? The beautiful thing about Harry, he's so many years in market number one. He never had to consider that, never had to worry about it. And it freed him up to just be the man he was. And I thought that was just so honorable, the way he conducted himself off and on the air. But the most important thing, he was everybody's friend. You're right. More than the companion, more than just a guy introducing records. When he talked about... He, we all have things we have to get done. We have to read our commercials. We have to introduce the songs. We have to do all these things. But when the occasion arose on a news story or something that was happening, Harry was like your uncle. You're right. Just like your uncle. It was outstanding and uh, just really pleased to have heard him and known him a little. But uh, your stories about how he would... Uh, take you guys for ice cream and all that. And, and I'm, I'm really digging the fact that he was such a movie buff because, you know, in my older years, under quarantine, not getting to go anywhere, that's, boy, that's all I do at night is boom, 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 Netflix, Fire Stick, uh, Amazon. I'm, I'm doing everything I've got. And uh, it's really great to know we had more in common than I thought. Uh, sometimes CBS FM is a great thing to have in common. But then again, there's so many of us and the, the list is so long. And, and I'm really glad you were working uh, over there in Providence. And uh, wow, we got a lot of the same heritage there too. Because when I was at TIC, Howard Hoffman was working at uh, Pro FM and, and we used to talk to each other on the air and I had him do bits for me while he was in, Pro in Providence. And there wasn't much I could do for him, but there was a lot he could do for anybody. And mm -hmm. Howard... Do you remember He's, Jimmy Gray? What's that? You remember Jimmy Gray? Yeah. I worked with him. I was his sidekick traffic chick. Oh, cool. I worked with Salty Brine. We'll talk oh. offline. So, um, you know, with you, just I just 
had another thought. I, you know, having, there were four kids. I was like the only kid that my dad used to be able to pick us up from school and he made our school lunches. He would line up all the bread, there are four kids. And he's like, okay, it's bologna time. Do you want the mustard or the mayo? There were no, like, it wasn't a menu, you know, your brown bag and at the brown bags are there. You know, my mother did the dinners and daddy was in charge and daddy would go to bed before we did, by the way, it was like eight o'clock at night. And like, that's when all the good shows would come on. My mom was a night owl. My dad was like the morning guy. They were so opposite. It was unbelievable. Sometimes I was wondering, how the heck does this work? And a lot of times mom would be watching TV like till 11 or 12. She talked to her girlfriends or her sister, you know, and it would go till midnight. She'd fall asleep on the couch. That's how it worked. Um, yeah. It's kind of funny, but, uh, and I'm sure, you know, people have heard these stories before, but, um, you know, those are kind of like some of the questions that people ask us, uh, you know, what's it like? And that is what it's like, you know, I'm, I'm blessed that I got to have a different relationship with a parent who is, um, you know, that was not a celebrity, but had a different kind of a job. Um, he got to see us do things. He was an active parent. My mother was an active, they were they were active. I was, I was interactive with them. And that's why I did take the time off to be with him and spend this wonderful quality time. Unfortunately, you know, the past couple of years, he deteriorated. Um, and I didn't even share what was wrong. And I will it he, he suffered from dementia towards the end. Um, and, uh, but I understood the disease. And I was a very patient daughter. And um, I, I, um, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. And I don't think he would have either. Um, very, you know, um, full disclosure, my mom passed away in my arms. She died of cancer and I let her go. Um, I think both parents wanted permission. And I believe I was chosen by God <laughs> to be that person in their lives. So, um, and it's taken a lot for me to go through all of this, but you know, I was chosen to be that person for both of them so that they could be together now, uh, painless and happy. And um, being so proud and being um, their daughter, um, I couldn't ask for anything more. The one thing I could ask for is for them to be back here with me or for me to be with them. But that'll happen someday, but I am very, very proud. You know that, I think you guys know that. But I'm also very humble and dad was too. And um, if I can give a little bit back of what daddy gave back, um, I will continue to do that. And um, I, I promise. What else? Let's talk more. Anybody else got questions? I don't want to monopolize it. My wife and I, she's in radio too. And I would be the afternoon dad. She'd be the morning mom and we'd trade off. She'd go to work especially in New York, she was doing late night. She was doing 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And, and, <laughs> and I was doing afternoon. So we'd trade off with the kids, that kind of thing. But boy, I relate. I know my kids would too. Well, there's got to be questions. Come on. <laughs> Patty, I have a question. Yes. Uh, this is Alan. Uh, did your dad listen to music at home when he got home? That's and what type of music did he listen to? Did he listen to, to the music he played or did he like another kind of genre? That, you know, that's a very common question. And, you know, he really didn't listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> I really, <laughs> um, he didn't. He, um, he always put in a, a cassette in for air checks. So he listened to his air checks. Um, if he listened to music, it would be the, the music he played, you know, which would be, he listened to a lot of, uh, when he was at CBS FM, I noticed that's like the, the music he listened to. When he was at ABC, um, I, I was pretty young. I don't remember that. I remember the day though, he came home and he wasn't working there anymore. He brought us all into the kitchen and we were little kids and we were all concerned. I'm like, what do you mean, daddy? You don't have a job anymore. All these little beady eyes looking up at him. Uh -huh. You know, and daddy, daddy got fired. He's like, don't worry, I'll be okay. <laughs> I'll be, I'll have a job soon. And, um, little do you know, when one door closes, another one opens. And he's often told us that. And it was so very wow. true. And, um, you know, his radio career wow. is extremely yeah. rare. Very rare. Um, 
you know, I worked at various radio stations. I never thought I was going to be um, as lucky as my dad. And, um, you know, that's what happens when you're such a, a great talent, but also a great person and a human being. Um, so I would say just the oldies, honestly, um, and air checks. We listen to a lot of the news. We listen to, you know, uh, um, I'd say 1010 and see, you know, 880, mm -hmm. but not a lot of music. He'd rather put in like a movie, honestly. Patty. Hi, Alan. How are you? I'm doing well. Good to see you. Good. Yes. It's good to be seen, actually. <laughs> Listen, yes. um, as you and I have discussed in the past, and I just want to share some of this. Um, we were, we were, I was always a fan of Dad um, from MCA, but yet I was still an ABC person. Mm -hmm. So when he came to ABC, oh, man, I was thrilled. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the one thing, and I've told you this, but you mentioned Target and how he used to like to go to Target and Best Buy. And I'm saying, okay, BJ's, which is where we saw you know, I first, you know, I saw him after he had retired. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I'll never forget, it was like Christmas time. Yes. And I looked up and said, Harry? And he looked at me, he says, Alan, I said, yeah. And I pulled out my camera and you came over and I didn't even recognize you. Because the last time I had seen you, you were wearing your MCA good guy sweatshirt. And you were going to take, take a photo of, of, of your father and I. I said, no, no, I can do it myself. And your father never even said, oh, by the way, that's Patty again. He thought I was so strange. Hey, can this girl take a picture? <laughs> yeah. And so, but the thing is, and I'm saying this to everybody so they know what type of a mensch your father was. Mm -hmm. And that's when your first brother passed away in the 90s. Your father sent individual letters to people. Wow. And it wasn't the same one. It wasn't like, okay, well, I'm going to just add a name in and then just rewrite it. No? Wow. Because I know the, the thank you note that I got from your dad was not the same one my mother got. Mm. Okay? And you want to know something? I used to keep that in my car until I got rid of the car, but then so I moved it. And as I have shared with you, when my mother passed away, I think I think it came out that she passed away like two days. She lived like two days longer than your dad, although she you know, she passed away a few months earlier. Um, but you want to know something? I, and I've told you this, and I told this to um, Chris Ingram when I went to go empty out her room they gave me two photos that were autographed that she'd been holding at the time of her death one was of Dan and Chris yep. and one was of your dad and me well. and I, I gotta tell you um, that's still you know in some ways uh, I, I don't know but, you know, and again, that's why I'm, I'm tr always trying to stay in contact with you mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm not that far away. And yet sometimes when I don't hear from you after a while, I don't want you to think I'm stalking you. I am. <laughs> but I was, I, I tell you something. The comments you made at your dad's funeral really broke me up. Really. Well, I, I guess the one thing that bothers me is, where's your brother? My brother is a very shy person. Um, my brother is in a wonderful relationship with a, a, a girl um, that they've been together for 22 years. Patrick is um, always been behind the scenes. Um, you know, I am the oldest of the four kids. 
Patrick was one of the twins. So his twin brother, Michael, he died in 2017, most of you know, suddenly of a heart attack in Florida. So he was not, he was devastated. He wasn't capable of even handling that. I had to go to Florida, you know, for four days and take care of Michael. Um, you know, um, BJ, um, most of you read about in the paper also, he was uh, passed away of a, a, a sudden car crash. Um, mom and dad had to deal with the policeman knocking on the door. Um, that was back in 86, I think. Um, or 86. I don't know. It's, it, it's too long and it's too many losses. Um, so Patrick lost two brothers and two parents. Um, everybody copes with loss differently. I'm 10 minutes away from him. I am his sister. Um, I asked him to join us today. He's, um, again, he's just a, a shy person. That doesn't mean that he doesn't love me or love daddy or mom. It's just, again, it's different how we mourn and it's different how we take, how we handle things. Um, but it, it's all good. It really is all good. We still are a, a family and we still are brother and sister. Um, it's okay. It's okay. Um, not to worry. And I'll always keep in touch on the page. That's why I'm keeping the page alive, okay? And I know you all care. And I, all, I know you all want to, um, you know, uh, see us now and then or get, you know, have an update. And that's why I did agree to do this. Um, and I think my dad would want this also. He called you his radio family. We included you in our lives and you've included him in your lives for so, so many years. I would not just not um, continue the tradition. Okay. Patty, I, I have one question about how your dad approached the job. Did he change his approach as the music changed or as pop culture changed, meaning once we had Beatlemania and then album radio, album FM radio taking audiences away from ABC uh, or MCA and um, the acts were on Sullivan, then Sullivan wasn't there anymore, then we got into disco. Did he change his way of approaching the job when all these things happened? I, you know, I don't think he did. My father was very knowledgeable. He always read his trades. He always was up on what was happening with music. Um, he was, um, he, he just, no, he, I don't think he did. I just think he always knew about the artist. Now, again, you don't have time to talk up you know, to the post about, hey, you know, they've been in, uh, they've been in the industry for 10 years and they've got four kids and they, they made their career doing this and this. You don't anymore. But he knew enough about the artists. He knew enough about their history. Um, I think he, ju he just had this, he had it in him. He just knew. Um, even his timing, you know, there's very rare people in the industry that just know how to talk right to the post. And the post means just right up till the, you hit the, 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 first, the first note of the music. Um, you know, I, I do remember a couple of times he talked right over it, but you know, in morning drive, it's really hard and you're, you're working with an engineer and you know, you've all seen daddy. He does like this and he, he, he you know, he would, to Al or um, I can't remember his other engineer. Um, it, he, it's, you're also not working your own board. Um, you're counting on somebody else. But um, now he he often he he lived by his trades. He really did magazines. Patty, I think my mute is off. We can hear you, Mike. Go ahead. I just have a quick, just a quick comment. Many years ago, I was listening to Harry Harrison, I'm, and I told him I wanted a picture of him with an autograph. Not only did he send the pic, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yeah. Not only did he send an autograph picture, but he sent me like two or three manila envelopes full of paraphernalia and memories and souvenirs from the different shows. Pictures. He is a very nice, a really kind man. That's all I have to say. 
Well, I want you all to know that nothing was ever pre-autographed, nothing was ever pre-written, nothing was ever standardized. The radio stations, both radio stations, um, ABC and CBS often said, hey, we'll have an intern help you. Hey, just leave your fan mail, we'll open it. He took all, all of his fan mail home with him. He took all of it home. And I often said, hey, daddy, you want some help? You want me to help you? And he would say, no, 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 I got this. He wanted to read each and every letter. He wanted to autograph each and every personal card. He didn't have the station pay for his headshots or any of that stuff. He had his own done and he would take, he always liked a flare pen and he liked black. He would prefer the blue, but blue was getting hard to get because blue on the black and white, but he looked for the blue. Uh, the blue uh, flare, and it was it had to be the fine point, and he would always get that in his, you know, at Christmas time or his birthday, you know, whenever we could find it, we popped him some of those, mm -hmm. and he wrote like a doctor, people often told him, and it would always be personal. Your name was always included, and those big H's, right, guys? But um, he had to get through each and every one, and when we sold our house in Norwood, New Jersey, about five or six years ago, I couldn't tell you how many bins of letters I have found. Um, he saved I, probably every letter. I don't think he ever threw a letter away. Um, and um, there was always this one letter that he, a story he often told. And um, he said, I just can't believe how many people wrote to me and loved me so much. There was this one lady who wrote me and she gave me up for Lent and she barely made it through Lent. She gave it. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me up for what? What's up with her? You know, but he it was true, and he showed us the letter. Um, it, it, that's that's dedication. That's loyalty. I mean, I'm having a hard time giving up a glass of wine for Lent, but whatever. Um, but uh, it was really true. Um, and uh, he, he just he never blew anybody off. He truly truly was what, what Bill said, what you heard on the radio was exactly what you got at home, what you got at the grocery store. Um, and even while he was ill, he always knew who I was. He always knew who Patrick was. He often knew who everybody was. He was, um, he was a wonderful patient, he was a wonderful guy. The only thing I guess I wish is the ward came much early on when he could truly stand up and really acknowledge his peers and um, more of his peers could appreciate him. It was a shame that Patrick and I had to accept it on his behalf. He was there, he understood what was happening, but it was almost like, gee guys, you know? And the reason <laughs> that they said it was, um, it was an oversight, like many of the CBS FM jocks that have been inducted prior to, they really thought that he had been inducted many, many years prior. Whether it was, it wasn't, it doesn't matter. He's been in the New York Radio Hall of Fame for uh, a few years now, and now he's in the National. Um, I think it's just, it doesn't really matter whether he is or he isn't. He's left his mark in radio, and um, I think we're all better people for it. Yeah, Patty, thank you so much. We do need to wrap up now. Um, you gave a wonderful profile of who Harry was as a person and as a DJ and his home life. And we really very much appreciate that. And all the comments were really relevant and good. And I did want to say that um, you will recall that when Harry went to the um, Broadcasters Hall of Fame and received the award, that was the same weekend that we had our last Oldies fan meet and greet at Ben's Deli. And Jim Kerr was at our event, and he had also been at the uh, Broadcasters Hall of Fame. And he gave us a note-by-note -note wrap up of what went on. And he said that he was so proud to have Harry receive that award. And you could hear a pin drop when Harry was you know, being given the award because everyone knew that he was such a class act in radio. So we thank Harry for that. And uh, all of us uh, you know, remember Harry and remember all the great DJs from the past. And uh, we continue to live through our memories 
memories and each year we always have our gathering. So uh, most of you have my email address or a Facebook friend and, and Bruce Slutsky and I will certainly keep you posted as to the next one. We always look for great speakers. Um, you know, those that we've had in the past are great. Broadway Bill Lee, you're always welcome back. And uh, if you have suggestions for someone or connections to someone who was a DJ in New York or still is, or a recording artist who is relevant to that era, let me know and we'll try to get them. If you have any contacts, let me know, because uh, we always have a great time and it's great seeing old friends. Uh, we've been doing this now for uh, about 15 years and we hopefully uh, will continue on. Um, Bill, do you want to say anything else as we close? Um, just want to say thank you, everybody. And, and Jeff, thanks for coordinating this with me ahead of time. And this will be uh, recorded and I'll put it up on YouTube and we'll put a link to it at the Oldies Message Board uh, and other places and Facebook. Patty, thank you. This was fun. I'm, I'm, so, glad, I'm so glad I was here. Um, I hope to see you. I will do my best to be here next year. And um, if didn't get your questions answered, um, send me um, a messenger and maybe I'll, I'll be able to get to them, okay? How's that? Or, All right, thank you. Yeah.